bless the name of the Lord.
the life that we are all living in. Every day as adults that we sit, every day we interact with people, we so see. Many of us don't recognize this truth. When you meet with people, when you interact with people, you are so in seed, albeit unknowingly sometimes. But other times, you also know exactly what you are doing, that you are sowing a seed. The entire scripture, we are going to look at some of them, points to us the fact that sowing and reaping as a law by God is unbroken. Unbreakable, irrevocable. Every one of us should note that whatsoever you are doing and you are sowing a seed that is going to come back to you, it doesn't matter what you do. Let's take our Bible in our text from the book of Rosiah, chapter 8. Hosea, chapter Two verses. Verse 7, then I will read verse 3. And let me read from the New King James Passion. They sow the wind and reap the wild wind. The stock has not power, has no power. It shall never produce me. If it should produce aliens will swallow it up. Verse 3 says, Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue them. Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue it. God is talking so his own people, his chosen, his elect, the nation that he called his. This is God addressing them for the reason of the kind of seed they have been sowing. Now, uh, I am content to talk now. I don't know who said that time. The 25 years, I have 40 minutes. Whoever said it, I'll be doing it right now. I'm going to tell you. Don't come to give me a signal. I have no time here. Until the, until the revival is left for me. I have not started. But if I will use my full time, just take note of that. Hallelujah. I told you that this, when they say this thing, sometimes they will just manage. Tell you, oh yeah, time up. <laughs> All right. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, God was speaking to his own people, he said. The people who had chosen, he said to them, You have sown the wind. You will reap wild wind. How did they sow the wind? They went into idolatry. They went into the worship of idols. They left the worship of their father, the living God. They went into sacrificing unto idols. What will idols do? Nothing. So God looked at them and considered all that they have been doing as a seed to the wind. A seed like the wind. The wind is always blowing. The wind is not settled. The wind does not gather. So when people do things that is evil, things that are evil, God says, you have done that which is evil. You have sown vanity. You will reap vanity. Whatsoever it is that you have sown, that is exactly what you will reap. Take note. I want to give you some very key points to note. Number one, let it be known to you that whatever you sow will not be what you will reap exactly. You will reap more than what you have sown. When the Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, the same shall he reap. 
It's not talking about the measurement. It's talking about the likeness. For instance, if you sow maize, when you are going to harvest, you will harvest maize. If you sow uh, ground nut, when you are going to harvest, when you go to your farm, what will you harvest? Ground nut. That's what the Bible is talking about. It's not talking about the quantity. So when it comes to the quantity, whatsoever you sow, you will get more of it. Take note of that. That's point number one. Point number two. If you choose to live in wickedness, you will reap hair for eternity. If you choose to live a life of wickedness, you will reap hell in the end. Now, brothers and sisters, has it ever occurred to you why it is that Satan will never be in heaven? Even if he decides to repent, even though there is no repentance for him. Because anytime Satan behaves, all the doings, all the workings of Satan are evil. They are evil works. Everywhere he goes, it is wickedness that he perpetrates. That's why, because he sows wickedness, he will born in hell. Now, the question is, why should someone who has said, Jesus, come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior, follow Satan to do wickedness? Knowing fully well that Satan sows wickedness and those who sow wickedness, we end up in hell. Because hell is wickedness. It is a place of punishment. It is a place reserved for those who refuse to do what God wants us to do. My brother, my sister, I want to encourage you if you are a Christian, turn away from anything that is called wickedness. In Jesus' name. Number three, if you turn away from sin, that is from wickedness, and believe in Christ, you will reap heaven for eternity. If you turn away from wickedness and embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you will end up in heaven as your eternal place. Number four, there are consequences for everything in life. There are consequences for everything in life. Take note of that. You may think that you are smart, you may be doing whatsoever you are doing, thinking you are smart, brother, sister. You can't be smarter than God. The law of sowing and reaping is unbreakable. It is irrevocable. It doesn't matter how you try to figure out whatever you want to do. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 21. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 21 says, Do hand join in hand. The wicked shall not be unpunished. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Though hands join in hand, though you form a clique, though you gather with formidable forces, powerful people together to do wickedness, let it be known to you, God in whose presence we are right now says the wicked shall not be unpunished. Meaning if you are a wicked person and you think you are succeeding brother, sister, you are not succeeding anything. God's word is irrevocable. You are going to be punished. Because you are sowing wickedness, you will reap wickedness. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I want to use the scriptures to now give us proofs. Proofs that there is no way any of us can avoid reaping from whatsoever that we are sowing. In the general terms, look at the book of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. 
a place we normally use to collect offering from brethren. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Whosoever so it uh, what? Sparingly. He will do what? He will give sparingly. If you sow sparingly, you will give sparingly. We use that to collect offering. But you know what? When the Bible says that whosoever sows, if I sow sparingly, I will reap sparingly. It has several dimensions. Let me tell you, for instance, in the place of prayer, if you are somebody that likes to jump, jump into the presence of God and you do one, two, three, four minutes and you go away, you will receive that kind of thing from God also. You are sowing. You don't delight in staying in the presence of God. You like to rush in and rush out. That is the way you will get your benefit. If you don't like to stay in church, just like to come and stay for five minutes and you go away, you will miss your blessings. You have moved out. When God is distributing blessings, you have missed your own because you are no longer there. So when the Bible tells us so sparingly, it doesn't stop only in the aspect of sowing your money. I want you to know that whatsoever you do, if you are cultivating and you cultivate a small portion of land, assuming I have the whole of this place as my land, and I cultivate only here, at the end of the day, I will harvest only from here. I have sown sparingly. I am harvesting sparingly. Take note of that. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you will that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Who is talking here? Our Lord Jesus. What is Jesus saying here? He is giving you and I an advice. This is the law of sowing and reaping. If you want people to do good to you, do good to people. This is Jesus talking. Whatsoever it is that you want people to do unto you, do exactly the same. In other words, if you don't want them to do what you want to do to them, don't do that thing to them. Why? Because it is going to come back. You are going to harvest what you have done. It is irrevocable. It's unbreakable. I'll give you a typical example. When I drive, I watch these things very carefully. When I drive and I, I get to a junction, and somebody wants to enter, and I'm the one driving, I'll wait for the person to enter. Then I will enter the main road. I, where I want to enter, I'm expecting that somebody will stop. Whoever is there that sees my trafficator will stop for me to pass. I have seen that repeatedly. I have not missed it one time. Why? Because I allow, I allow people to pass when it is my own turn. So when, when it is their own turn to allow me, they will do exactly that. I don't know who the person is that is driving, that, I, that is supposed to stop for me to now enter, but they will always stop. Why? Because of the unbreakable law of sowing and reaping. It is a fact. You can try it. Many times, if I'm with my driver, I tell him, give them allow them to pass. Why am I doing that? Because I want, when we this our own turn, I want them to allow us also to do what? To pass. You can't stop it. You can't break it. It's a law. So take note of that, brother. Take note of that, my sister. All right. Now, let's now go. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. 
the law of sowing and reaping. If you sow to the flesh, you already know that this flesh is very corrupt. The flesh does not want anything like a pain. The flesh wants to have it easier at all times. And the flesh will keep on driving people to do things that they know is wrong. So if you are someone that is given to obey your flesh, you will reap corruption. But if you allow your spirit, to rule you, then you are very sure of harvesting life eternal. May God help each and every one of us to make sure that whatsoever we do every day is something that we'll be glad to receive in return in Jesus' mighty name. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 11, verses 18 and 19. It says, The wicked walk it. A deceitful work. But to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. As righteousness tended to lie, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. Righteousness tends to lie. Whoever is pursuing evil, you want to go and do evil, you want to do wickedness against anybody. Bible says you will pursue it to your own death. It will never change. It is here to stay. Take note of that. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. A good man shall be satisfied from himself. If you are good, if you are good, if you are doing good, brother, sister, you will reap it. You will see goodness. Goodness will meet you everywhere you go. But the backslider will be saturated with his own works, his own ways. He thinks what he's doing is right. He feels, I will no longer follow this part of righteousness, this part of obedience to the almighty God. That we get that backslider shall be filled with his own self, and that feeling of himself shall lead to destruction. But the righteous always will pursue what is good because at the end of the day, he will be satisfied. She will be satisfied with whatever it is that he has been doing. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Another place that we will. We like to use to give off a letter of him. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. This is telling us again that what you sow is not the exact thing that you, I mean the exact quantity that you are going to reap. He says, Shaking together, press down, shaking together, running over. This is Jesus speaking. When you give, people will give to you. Let me not use myself as an example because if I begin to do that, a lot of people will think I'm showing up. But let me use a typical example one basic one, very strong one. When we came to Kenya as missionaries, God sent us one sister who was with Baptist Church, Backland Baptist Church. She went to her pastor, Pastor Ambrose, Nangao, and asked to be released so that she can come and help us, missionaries, to navigate. She came and joined us. She had a car called KUU, KUU, very old car. In fact, that car never, never until one day. The tank of that car never saw fuel to the full. We were always, we would enter a petrol station, we would buy 500. Another time, 300. That's the way we were buying fuel. And she was sacrificing. One day, myself and Pastor Farino, we agreed, let's fill up this car. 
so that this car at least can celebrate, the tank of this car can celebrate Christmas. So we fill the car. I think it was Pastor Mary that said, I'm sure this car will be wondering what happened today, that every part is now filled with fuel. Mary did that even when she was discouraged. She never stopped. Then she went over to America. Exactly what she has sown, she reaped more. One day, number one, she told us how people were supporting her. She started a parish. How people were supporting her came, people came rally around to help her. Said it was what you did for us. Then one day, a couple took her to a showroom, asked her to pick any car. That time she picked a car that was to come to be released the next year. It was in the showroom. She picked it, the couple paid outright. Why? Because when she was here, Mary sold her car by driving us everywhere. It is unbreakable law, brother, sister. Anything you think you are doing and you are smart, you are cheating people, you are wasting your time. It's going to come. It doesn't matter how you pretend. You will repeat. The only thing that you need to do is to quickly repent and change before it begins to come. May the Lord help you to do the necessary in Jesus' mighty name. When it comes to giving, Jesus said here, give and it shall be given unto you. So when you give people, it doesn't matter whether you are giving to receive or not, it will come to you. But if you are the type that people don't get anything from you, people may because of your position come and give you, but brother, sister, you will lose it. When you are not uh, giving to releasing, being a blessing to people, you will suffer the consequences because the law of sowing and reaping is a law that can never be broken. When you are noted for giving, in fact, let me use the example. Many of us, those of us who are a bit old in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, we have had our father in the Lord, the general overseer, tell us this story. When he used to give out tithes, tithes to people, he said, every time people would keep on giving him tithes. Then he went to God and said, ah, why, why am I receiving tithes? This is too much now. He said, that is what you have given. You gave, and then you get more. He began to give shoes, the same thing. He began to give out cars, the same thing. So what is that telling us? It's telling us, brother, sister, when you are somebody that gives, you will get back in return. If you don't like to give, keep your money. If people mistakenly give you one way or the other, it will not profit you. Because you don't deserve it. God wants us to know, brothers and sisters, even when it comes to giving for the work of the Lord, there are some of you, when it is announced, it is time to give. You frown your face. You are angry. You don't like it. When they tell you, do X, Y, Z, you don't like it. You know, it's yourself that you are doing. At the end of the day, those who are giving are the ones who are going to profit because they will be given back. That's what the master said. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Verse 35. I have showed you or I have shown you in the modern English. All things, how that so laboring, he ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, is more blessed to give than to receive. Why is it more blessed to give, brothers and sisters, than to receive? Why? Why is it more blessed? Because when you give, you are going to harvest more. You will get more in return. When you give, don't give to receive from the person that you are giving to, brother, sister. 
Particularly if you are giving to the poor, how will the poor give you in return? Learn how to give to those who will not give you back. And giving is not just money. Give your time. Give your prayer. Give your service. When you do this, you will reap it back. There are some people, no matter what you say, they will never buy you an orange. Just one orange. It doesn't matter the preacher that preaches. They will live their life the same way. And they are the ones in church that complain so much. Nobody likes me. Nobody loves me. How would they like you, my friend? You are getting, getting what you have been sowing. Nobody comes to say hello to you. How many people have you said hello to? They don't like me because you don't like them. That's why they don't like you. If you want them to like you, to love you, then love people. This law is unbreakable. Let nobody deceive you. Today, look at your life. I will tell you the obvious. If you take your life very, very well, you will understand that what is around you, what is happening to you, are the things that you have sown. They are as a result of what you have sown in the time past. However, I, mean, I need to make this clarification. Somebody may get what he or she has not sown. For instance, you don't lie. When you speak to people, you speak the truth. And then somebody comes to lie to you. God always has a way of coming back to you to let you know that person lied. So if you're a liar, and you say people are lying to you, my friend, you are guessing exactly what you have been saying. You lie to people, so they will lie to you. You buy by people, they will buy by to you. It is unbreakable. Forever, oh Lord, your word is settled. If you want a change in your life, then change. Without changing, there can be no change that will come your way. If you want to be loved, love people. Even love the unlovable. May God help us to do the necessary thing, knowing that what we reap is what we have sown. In Jesus' mighty name. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. There is that scatter it and yet increase it. And there is that withhold it more than is meat that it tended to what? To poverty. The same law. You are scattering, you are giving, you are giving, you are giving. You will have more. You withhold. Poverty will catch up with you. It's a law. It's unbreakable. Jesus himself says so. God says so. He commanded the children of Israel to worship him and worship him alone. They refused. They began to worship idols. What will idol give to them? And that's why God said to them, you have sown wind. You will reap a wild wind. Wild wind is more dangerous than the wind. Ordinary wind. When the wild wind is coming, it will scatter anything on the way. If you don't want that to happen to you, do what God wants you to do, expects you to do. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. The law of sowing and reaping. He that watereth shall be watered back. It is the law. And the prophets, you water people, you will be watered. What you want, do it. If you want to be given money, give somebody money. If you want to be abused, abuse people. And the way they will abuse you, you will not be there when they will be abusing you. Because there are some of you, you abuse people because of maybe you are elderly, they will not abuse you in your phone, but they will abuse you behind you. Why? Because you must sleep what you have sown. It's unbreakable. 
Proverbs chapter 21, verse 13. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, they shall not be heard. Somebody is crying, you refuse to hear. The poor person is crying, you refuse to hear. God said, the law of sowing and reaping is unbreakable. You will cry and you will not be heard. So if you are wondering why your prayers are not being answered, look into your life. Have you been responding to the cries of other people? You can't change these things. That you are singing in the choir or you are a wonderful worshiper. Your worship is good, fine. But you cannot leave undone what you are supposed to, uh, to do and then you expect your worship to cover what you have left undone. It doesn't happen. May God help everyone in Jesus' name. Concerning evil deeds. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Evil deeds. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We are still talking the same language. Don't be deceived. That's what the scripture is telling you. Don't be deceived by anything. They clap their hands for you. They praise you outside. You feel happy when people talk good about you. But you know exactly who you are. You know the kind of seed you have been sowing. Say, do you not be deceived? God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow. Do you know that God knows every seed that you are sowing? Somebody who is clapping for you may not know the kind of seed you are sowing. But God says, whatsoever seed you sow, you will reap it. So if you don't want to reap a bad uh, seed, a bad fruit, then sow a good one. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Job chapter 4, verse, Job chapter 4, verse 18, verse 8 and 9. It says, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness, reap the same. By the blast of God, they perish. And by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. Job is saying, this is what I have seen. This is what I have seen. The people who are blind, sowing iniquity, they reap wickedness. Evil comes their way. You can't change it. It's unbreakable. May the Lord help you, brother. May the Lord help you, sister. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 31 says, Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. They shall eat of the fruit of their own way. Whatsoever you are way, is that the kind of fruit you are going to get? Let nobody deceive you. There is no amount of prayer your pastor is going to pray to change these things. Whatsoever you are sowing, you are going to reap it. So if you don't want to reap something that is bad, stop doing something that is bad. Let's talk about righteousness. Sowing righteousness. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in where to it. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Hallelujah. There is an assurance for everyone who is doing what is right. That there is going to be a reaping of the good that you have been doing. But what you need to do is to make sure you don't faint. I have observed something. When you have been known to be good and be very, very good, if you make one mistake and does anything bad, people forget all the good you have been doing and they will use the bad. That's what the Bible is saying. If you faint not, so don't ever faint. Don't faint, brother. Don't faint, sister. Don't faint. Let's make sure we do always what is right. May the almighty God help us to do only the things that are right so that we will reap the things that are also right. If you don't do these things, brother, sister, God knows exactly what is going to happen to you. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12, he says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. When you sow in righteousness, you will attract the mercy of God. 
So what are you showing? Righteousness? Wickedness? What is it? You should be telling yourself exactly the kind of thing you are saying. Judgment. As touching judgment as I conclude. It says 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 9 and 10. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done. Whether it be good or bad, every one of us, brother and sister, in the final analysis, we appear before God and we shall all receive the unbreakable law of sowing and harvest. You will harvest your own. I will harvest mine. God knows exactly what we've been saying. Finally, Jeremiah chapter, 11, chapter 17, verse 10. The Lord searched the heart. I tried the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. How many of us will want to be treated exactly the same way you are treating other people? Can I see your hand? You want to be treated exactly the way you are treating other people? That's exactly what is going to happen in the by and by. Because our God has been marking and watching us, and every one of us is going to receive exactly what we have been sowing as a seed. We will get it as a harvest. If you love, love will be waiting for you. If you hate, hatred will be waiting for you. If you give, give us will be waiting for you. In fact, they will not just be waiting for you coming. I pray that from today, you know that the law of sowing and reaping is unbreakable. Did you hear me? Unbreakable. Those of us who are pastors, if you are lacking in finances, if you are not having enough to do what you are supposed to do, can you begin to practice giving to other ministries that are suffering with, from the little that you have? And what and see what God will do for you. Practice being a helper to others who are in need of help. There is no way the law of sowing and reaping will be broken. God's word is forever settled. Jesus said, do unto others what you will love them to do unto you. It is an unbreakable law. It is the law and the prophets. Going forward from today, I pray, you will begin to do what you expect to get back and return. If you want people to pray for you, pray for other people. Don't make other people your prayer contractor. Pray for other people and do the pray for. And when they pray for you, their prayers will walk in your life. Shall we please do our stand as we pray? If the law of sowing and reaping will never be broken, what is it that you want to see in your own life? Meaning, you are the architect of whatever is going to come your way. I want you to pray. The Almighty God will help you. That every day, you will be mindful of the fact that whatsoever you are doing counts. Are you here in the sanctuary? And Jesus Christ has become Lord and Savior of your life. You are sowing wickedness. You are going to reap hell. So the only way out for you to repent and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Talk to God and ask him to help you, everyone. Please ask God to help you so that going forward, you will not think that you are smart. You are smarter than other people. Because you can't be smarter than God. It will come back to you. Whatever you are doing to others. If you are here and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Can I see your hand please? Lift it up your right hand. And I will pray with you. Anybody here who is not in Christ will want to get saved right now. If you are a wicked person. If you are a sinner, you are wicked. Every time I say wicked fellow. And if you want to be saved, I will pray with you right now. And you will be saved. Anybody? They all say. Let's then to bring in unbelievers into our meeting, brothers and sisters. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you. Lord, through the pages of the scriptures, you have proven to us how this fact that the law of sowing and reaping can never be broken. I pray that you will help each and every one of us to conduct our lives on a daily basis in such a way, O oh God, 
that we will be glad to receive what we sow on a daily basis towards other people in your kingdom. Help us, O oh Lord, to put our lives into your word and function in line with your word all the days of our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And God will say, Amen.